Look this morning at Matthew chapter 6 again. So if you would turn with me to Matthew chapter 6, we're getting into prayer. I like to pray. Anybody like to pray? Yes. You know why I like to pray, guys? When I pray, I don't know about, I don't, have you guys experienced this? When you pray, like things change and happen? Yes. Yeah, there's a few people that I can agree with, right? When you pray, it's not just a practice of saying words out into the air or like silently meditating and, and wondering whether the words in my brain are actually effective or not. Like when you pray, you're talking to the living God. Amen. And so when we have an opportunity to talk to God, I don't know about you, but I want to take advantage of that. Right? Like there's a, there's a God in heaven who created everything. And, and if I get to speak to him, then he can, he can create things on my behalf. You better, I'm not going to talk to him. You know, I, I haven't really, I don't know if you guys have ever had, anybody have celebrity encounters or something, you know, like you talk to somebody really important? Yeah, you have? Okay, that's good. I had one instance, one opportunity. I thought he was really important. I got to go down to Stoughton one time when I was a teenager. And we got to see Donald Driver, he was a wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers, play at a charity basketball game, and I got to go shake his hand. And I actually asked him for his diamond earring, but then he, he saw that and then they had my ears pierced, and he said, well, you're not going to be able to wear it. So I was like, oh, better right. And I didn't get to, he even started to take it off, it was really cool. We get to talk to somebody that's far more important than any celebrity encounter we could have who has existed from the beginning always until eternity, who sustains life, who heals, who creates, who's powerful. Prayer. It's, a, it's an important aspect of the believer's life. And this morning, we're going to look at some topics of prayer. Did anybody have a good, a good time for, for Valentine's Day? Who had who yes. treated their, their sweetheart special? You got to treat me to get I know. Pablo, you know, you just like... I had a girlfriend. I had Somebody else is getting, getting married this summer, too, so uh, yeah. it's going to be a good wedding-filled summer. Um, but man, Valentine's coming around. It's a good time just to celebrate people that you love. I don't know about you guys, but I have the best wife ever and the best son ever uh, and the best mom and the best dad. I don't this afterwards. We'll, get that. we'll, we'll settle this afterwards. Yeah. My mom is the best mom ever, and it's so true that her email is even the best mom ever. <laughs> <laughs> the best mom ever is her email address. And you guys can be around me for a while. I like to talk of mom and dad. I like to talk of I mean, Rachel and Denver. It was really fun on Valentine's Day. Uh, I was a little bit delayed, I'll confess. I didn't quite get the car until about six o'clock on Friday evening. It was just one of those one of those kind of weeks. Every time I went to go get it, it didn't work out. And so me and Denver, we went and got our hair did, and then we stopped at the CVS to get our, our car for mom. And it was really neat. Denver got this sweet car. It has like it was like six different cars. You open it and then you had to open another one and open another one open another one and then it got to this the very end and it was like uh this little tiny hug and it like opened up and it was a little hug that hugged mom and he signed it and he said um i love you mom and he was really giddy about it like normally he would sign you know denver or something but he just said i love you mom and he put the card in and we're getting, we got out of the car at home, and it starts like, he jumped out of the car, he's jumping towards the door, I'm like, wow, I was like really excited about this. And he goes, Dad, guess what? And I said, I said what? He goes, I'm the only one that can call mom, mom. <laughs> I 
and you're really happy about that. That is, that is awesome. You know, and so and so sure enough, when she opened the card, he said he made he made the statement again. Mom, I'm the only one that can call you mom. It was an awe moment. When we get into the topic of prayer, this is how Jesus thinks about his father. And this is going to be the important, if, you can get, if we can get anything out of today's message, get this. <coughs> Jesus is crazy about the Father. And this is the type of Father that we have. It is a Father that we can brag about. A father who is approachable, a father who cares about us, a father in, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 8, it says, a father that knows what we need even before we ask him. Our father knows the most intimate details about us, and he cares about us, and he wants to answer every one of our prayers. He's an awesome father. And when Jesus talks about prayer today in Matthew chapter 6, he, he's talking about prayer to the <laughs> Father, to the one that, that he's crazy about, that he, can, he won't do anything unless he sees the Father doing it, everything that he does, all the love that Jesus shows, all the miracles that he does, all of it is a demonstration of his daddy. And he made it possible... Jesus made it possible that each one of us can also call him Father. And so even me, and I'm thinking all the awesome things that I could say about my dad, or all the awesome things I could say about my, my mom, or my wife, or even my son, I could just go on bragging and bragging and, and bragging about it, but, but doesn't even compare to how awesome our Father in Heaven. As we're looking here in Matthew chapter 6, let's read verse 5, and we're going to go through verse 13 this morning. It says this, And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, don't keep up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Don't be like them. For your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then like this, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Jesus, at the beginning of his teaching about prayer, he says, pray like this, and we're going to get into this morning the Lord's Prayer a little bit, and, and think about how awesome it is, and how, do, how it leads us and teaches us kind of this ways that we can pray, categories of prayer. But Jesus points out this first. He draws our attention to verse 5. He says, don't pray in such a way that draws attention to yourself. Last week I kind of joked about our giving, that we shouldn't sound our trumpets uh, when, we, when we give. But it did say Jesus was watching the giving box. I decided that's not a practice that we'll do here at Cap City Church. But as, as, we, as we pray, again, Jesus makes this point. Don't do it to draw the attention to yourself. That's what hypocrites do. And they, do, they just stand around, they want the attention. He also says in verse 7, right, that it's 
not about your many words. Don't heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. It's kind of surprising that right after that instruction is given, we have the Lord's Prayer that is often prayed more as a formula than as a prayer of our heart. Jesus, God, the Father, Jesus is encouraging us to pray prayers that are meaningful, that are true to our hearts. It is not about the many words that we pray. It's not even about the type of words that we pray. I know some of us have been around in the church maybe for a while, and, and we have some nice, good, churchy words in our, in, our, in our prayers. And even sometimes there's things that I say in my prayer, and it's more out of habit of saying it than really meaning of my heart. That, this is what Jesus is getting at. Don't just heap up empty words. Pray what's on your heart. Pray real prayers. Oftentimes, I find it surprising that the, the Lord's Prayer is used just like that. An, an empty prayer, a formulaic prayer that I repeat at certain times. Today, we're going to look at the Lord's Prayer, and it's going to force us to see the main objective of prayer. I mean, even today, I pray prayers because there's needs that we have. But as we look at the Lord's Prayer, there's a greater objective to our prayers. There's a greater reason, just getting our needs met, just seeing things done around the globe, there, there's, there's more to prayer than that. And this is what Jesus is saying. Pray in such a way that God's name becomes great. This is the main focus. If you get anything out of anything I say today, remember this. Our prayers can have a greater impact. The impact that Jesus is about to encourage us to make with our prayers is that we would pray prayers that make our Father's name great. Let's look here. Our Father in heaven. I love this. Our Father in heaven. And, and again, I, I, I have to... You know, for me, I think uh, many times I had a great experience with my father. So when I think about uh, my father in heaven, I, I often do picture my dad sitting in his easy chair in the living room. He always had a chair. Anybody else's dad have a chair? Their throne, their place of comfort. They sat there. They 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 own that. Thing. You don't sit there. It's dad's chair. But. My father, maybe like yours, or maybe unlike yours, he loved to cuddle with us. Because I, you know, even as, I'll admit it, we went down to Florida, 32 years old, mama and me, we're sitting on the couch, and we're like all close, me and dad, we're walking arm in arm down the beach, you know, picking up sheep seashells. I mean, I love that picture of our Heavenly Father. That He's one that actually enjoys our presence. He knows us before we even ask it, and He still wants us to come and talk with Him. I'm thinking about the way I am to Denver, and I'm like, <laughs> I've got always that reflection of our Heavenly Father. I need to work on this some. But our Heavenly Father is one who knows what we need and still wants us to approach Him. Who now, through Jesus and, and the work that Jesus has done, actually asked us to come in to his special place. 
This is the Father that Jesus says. When we approach Him, we can say, Our Father who is in heaven that actually wants us to come close to Him. Goes into the next phrase, Hallowed be your name. And I was saying, before I begin to study for this message, oftentimes when I go into a time of prayer, this is how my prayers will go. I will address God as Father. I'll address Him as, hey, thank you, Father. I'm glad that I get to come before you. And then I'll enter into a time of praise. And I'll just sing praises to Him. I'll, I'll declare praises in my prayer time. I'll, I'll tell Him how great He is, how worthy He is. I'll exalt Him. I'll, I'll, I'll tell Him about how great the day has gone, and thank you for the breath in my lungs, and I'll, I'll sing praises to His name, because hallowed here, nice English word, I don't know if many of us use this in our regular language, but it would mean to to revere, to, to set apart, to praise, to, to make high. Kind of also comes from this word of, of sanctify. We, we know that as a word that means that we should be one that is set apart from the world, that we are becoming more like God, right? That's a word that we use in our Christian walk. But here, to make God's name holy, reverent and awe and praise. Jesus continues in this instruction of prayer. Pray like this. He says to pray that your kingdom come. And when we're praying for these kind of injustices and slavery that still exists around the globe, that is even now bigger than any previous time, right? We can pray, God, Come, establish your kingdom. When we're praying for his kingdom to come, we're, we're praying that God's rule, that God's order would be established among us and in our situations. And so these prayers, I want to say this again later, but, but our prayer times, they're, also, they're both personal and they can take on global prayers, right? So in my life, God, come, bring your kingdom to my life. There is things in my life that don't look like your kingdom, that doesn't look like your rule. There is things that are against me. There is things that are out of order. God, come establish your kingdom. We can pray, Jesus invites us to pray those types of prayers. Continue in, and Jesus says that we can pray for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. We can pray for the perfection that we see in heaven to be done on earth. The healing the peace, the freedom of pain, the life abundant, we can pray that His will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. We also see that in heaven there is perfect obedience. The angels in heaven, they do exactly as the Father wills. And so part of this prayer, your will be done, is also a prayer, God, would you make me obedient to your will? God, would you create in me a sense of obedience that, God, I wouldn't fail you, that I would follow you, that, hey, the world around me, that they would obey you, that they would follow your instructions, they would live as you would want them to live, just as in heaven the angels declare your holiness and your goodness and your will. Let it be done here. Let it be done in my life. Let it be done globally around me. Go into leading into give us 
our daily bread. These are the type of prayers I like to pray. Sometimes, I kind of hurry through this first part because I, got, I really got something I gotta got let you know about. Jesus reminded us he already knows it and he wants us to bring it to his attention. But our daily bread prayers are God, would you meet our needs? God, would you meet the needs of my family? God, would you bring peace? God, would you... Rachel's going to lose her job here in, uh, in September. God, would you provide a job? God, would you make a way? Father, there's, there's need that we have. Father, I, I'm, I'm sick in body. God, would you would you <coughs> my body, Father, in my community, Father? I, I pray that you would take care of the widow, you would take care of the poor, Father, the, the homeless, Father, meet their needs. God, change their situations. Jesus says that we can pray these prayers. So how's that? So 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 I, I encourage you that praying for your needs is not a selfish prayer. God knows what you need, and Jesus here, he invites you to pray those type of prayers. That's an okay prayer. God wants to hear the needs that you have so that he can come through in a way that brings his name greatness. <coughs> pray this way. Give us the day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We're going to get into, in a couple weeks, we're going to get into forgiveness and the power of forgiveness and, and the release that it brings when we are ones who forgive. And even the danger of unforgiveness and how it how it keeps us captive and keeps our heart captive. And, and here in Scripture, Jesus reveals that it actually, when we are un, when we hold unforgiveness in our heart, there's actually creates a barrier between us and the Father and receiving forgiveness from Him. I want to encourage you, even now, to make efforts towards forgiveness, releasing others that have offended you or others that have wronged you. Forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Repentance. Coming to God. Asking forgiveness should be the mode of our hearts. We should be ones who are quick to say, Father, Forgive me. When we recognize in our hearts, when we recognize in our lives that we have not lived up to the standard of, of who God is, oh, may we be people who are quick to say, Father, forgive me, release me from that debt. Jesus encourages us to pray these types of prayers. Prayer continues, verse 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I like taking preventative measures. Anybody else? I would much rather not saying that. I'm like, I didn't even take that blue shot this year, but um, I would rather not have to deal with the issue. Right? If, there was, if there was a way that I could maintain my car, get my oil changed, make sure my tires are rotated, make sure my brakes are on the right thing, right? So that I don't have to deal with the uh, on the other side of it, right? Jesus invites us to pray preventive prayers. 
So it's, it is a really awesome thing about who God is that we can pray the thing just before that. We can pray, Father, forgive me. It's a really awesome thing that God is the one that is a deliverer. And so no matter what I get myself into, I know that I can turn to God and say, Father, forgive me. Father, deliver me. And I'm thankful for the story after story in the Old Testament that reminds me that God is one who not only delivers, but he restores. And some of us in the room, we can say, thank you, God, that you are a God that not only uh, he forgives me, but restores me. He will redeem me, right? We can just celebrate that all day long. But Jesus here, he says, pray some preventative prayers. Pray in such a way that... God, would you not lead me into temptation? God, when, when, when trials come and when test comes my way, don't allow me to be tempted by it. Don't uh, deliver me from the evil one's intent to destroy me. Keep us from sin. That's the prayer that Jesus is inviting us to pray. Keep us from sin. Deliver us from the intent of the evil. He has schemes. He, the enemy has schemes. He wants to destroy us. He wants to tear down our witness. He wants to, uh, he wants to tear apart our, our family. He wants to tear apart who we are. We can pray prayers and say, God, lead us not into temptation. Don't allow the evil one's schemes to come about and, and, and to come to fruition in my life. Pray the prayer from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. God, that Jesus, make it in me that I would choose the way of escape. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, there's no temptation that, that, uh, we, that we are unaware of that will overcome us, but there is a way of escape. And of course, as... I've said this already. Jesus is encouraging us on how to pray. But these prayers can both be personal and global, right? They can be for my life, my family's life, and we can extend that circle to our community, and we can extend that circle to our nation, and we can extend that circle around the globe. These are prayers. These are ways that we can pray. These are uh, avenues that we can pray for both ourselves and for the world. So pray this way, Jesus said. Pray for these things. But what motivates our prayer? Why should we pray? What takes our formula of this prayer, this list that we could say that we've accomplished it, we've gone through all these ways of praying, and accomplishes Jesus' purpose for instructing us to pray this way? Jesus as I said at the beginning, was consumed with making his Father's name great. He wanted people to know his Father. He even said, all of this I have done, what? For your glory, for your fame. See, and that is exactly what Jesus instructs us here in the Lord's Prayer. Pray in such a way that it brings my Father's name glory. As I mentioned at the beginning, I had learned this from uh, 
maybe a young age, when I go to the Lord's Prayer, that word hallowed instructs us or encourages us to, to revere or to make Jesus's, the God's name great, to, to praise his name. And so if you have prayed with me uh, in the office on Saturday night, you'll see I will often follow this way. So the first thing that we do is we'll spend time praising the name of God. But as I've been studying this recently, I, I'm, like, I'm like gaining a little bit more insight into this prayer. And I think, I think as I, I've seen this, I've come to understand it a little bit differently. And I think it will have, or I know it will have, a profound difference on the way that I pray going forward. So in this section, so oftentimes we, we see that uh, there's sections here, they got the, they got the praying prayers about who God is, hallow their name, your kingdom come, your will be done. And then we see kind of like the reverse side, there's three other ones that's, that's more personal. Hey, give us our daily bread, or give us and lead us into temptation. And I always, I, I had that at the forefront of my mind as well. But as I was looking here at this word hallowed, I think there is a greater way to organize this passage of Scripture. As I looked at it, it says, in our English, right, I don't know what version they had up here this morning. I know it was probably NIV, because I still haven't updated the system. Dion, you're my, you're my software guy. We've got to figure that out. Upgrade the system to have ESV in there. There you go. I'll delegate that task. No. But we can say here, uh, what we could say if we were to look at Greek languages and all get all, all sophisticated here, we could say, let your name be hallowed, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. And, and Jesus here really gets to the point of cause your name to be praised. Cause your name to be regarded highly. Cause your name to be holy. I can I can pray differently because of that. So we've, we've spent some time uh, Dion and Kirk and I, they've done it more often than I, so I don't want to say it's just myself, but gone around door to door in this in these neighborhoods and we've knocked on doors and we've made attempts to make Jesus' name known. Denver has gone with us one time, and, I, and he, he remembers, he recounts this all the time. He recounts the time he got to interact with a gentleman at the door, and he's like, I'm, a, I'm an atheist, I don't believe in God, I'm happy without him. And we, we go around these doors, and over and over again, I, I'm an atheist. There, and there, there's, there is names that people in, in our community revere Highly. I could say celebrity. I'm not thinking about celebrity names. I'm thinking about certain theologians or certain scientists or certain individuals that they're going to take their word above every other word. And when I was praying about this and looking at this and studying it and I began to understand the type of prayer to pray. God, hallowed be your name. Father, cause your name to be famous, to be revered. 
to be respected, to be exalted. And so then, <clears throat> I began to relook at every one of these subjects of prayer. God, let your kingdom come. Why? So that your name would be famous. That your name would be hallowed. That your name would be respected and known above the, the, above the, the way that, that we run our lives, the way that we set up our kingdoms. God established your kingdom as the right way so that your name would be praised. God, let your will be done on earth as in heaven. Because, man, if I look at this slavery issue, men have allowed their will to be done, and it doesn't look like life. God, allow your will to be done on earth as in heaven, so that your name becomes famous, that you become the standard, that you become holy, that you become the one that people recognize and look to. God, meet my needs. Father, sustain me. Why not? Not just because I want to have a, <coughs> my belly full, not just because I want to have these prayers answered. No, sustain me so that your name Amen. becomes Amen. great. That right. you become hallowed. That people recognize, God, that it's you and it's not me. I don't want to take any credit for my needs being Amen. met. No, I want them to depend on you so that your name is famous. That's Father, right. I want people to know you. Meet these needs so that they can see how great and how awesome you are. How you sustained my life. Amen. How you rescued me. Amen. God. Forgive my sins. Father, I don't want to be one that is, is in despair. I don't want to be one, Father, who, who, who has the weight of the world on my shoulders. Father, may I be different than any other person because everybody else carries the weight of what they've done and their failures and their shortcomings on their shoulders. But God, make your name great. Amen. Forgive me of my sins. That's Father, right. make me a new person because for your name, Amen. I need forgiveness. Amen. Father, <coughs> lead me not into temptation. Father, may I not stumble. May I not fail. May I not become a wreck. Because guess what? Everybody's life is a wreck. That's right. That's right. Father, right. may your name Amen. Great. Make it great. Hallelujah. Deliver me. Set me free. <coughs> Make your name great in me. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. What causes us <coughs> to pray is not primarily who we are and what we need. Jesus wants his Father to be famous. Amen. To be glorious for everybody <coughs> to know his name. Our Father answers prayers not because of how we pray them. That's right. Not because of what we say. That's right. He answers so that his name will be great. Amen. And that all people may see him. So I encourage you <coughs> to pray in such a way that God's name becomes We can be people who pray impossible prayers because we have faith that our Father knows what we need and invites us into his most secret place, invites us into his most important place. 
but that his name become. This morning, I want to invite you You're here this morning, and you need hope. You need God to come through in an area of your life. I want to pray with you. I want to pray that God makes his name great in your life. I want to invite Richard, if you could come and play on the guitar this morning. We're going to have a time of prayer before we close Let's just take some time to go before our Father in heaven who loves us, who cares about us, who is just as crazy about you as Jesus was about him. And he wants to answer our prayers. So as Richard, Richard plays this morning, I want to invite you to come. And, and Kirk, could I even have you come and pray for a little bit, Jim? So myself and Kirk will be up here this morning. And let's just pray some prayers that make Jesus' name great. And whether it is you at your seat, or if you do want somebody to agree with you in prayer, come on up. We're going to spend some time going before our Father together saying, God, make your name great.